you know, like I'm talking about quality wise, Tubi lets you get away with them than anything. That's why. Oh, that's why everybody on too. That's why everybody on too. Yeah. And guess what? The ones who get the most money is the in Detroit with the trash movie that was on too. Mm -hmm. and, and why? Because they had the most content. And they let that shit slide. You say who had the most content? I'm like, sure so the niggas in Detroit they were putting up all them little homemade, yeah. homemade movies and shit. And Tubi was ready anything there. Well, it was on YouTube first. Tubi let them pull everything off YouTube and put it over there. So is it a thing to where you pay to get on there? No. Is Tubi a situation to where you pay to get on Tubi? No. Out of that world? No, it's like. I didn't know how to, I didn't really know the way to, to get on there. Somebody passed me out of you, but what they did was, they just said, Cole, let me see your, give me a copy of what you got, so they can see it. And if they want to fuck with it, I'm just going to connect y'all. So, and it, and it, it ain't Tubi, it's Homestead. Homestead is yeah. pretty much the real Like the liaison. Right, pretty much the middle man to get the Tubi type of shit. Yep. Have you ever tried to get on Netflix? I did, they didn't have the same movie. They said I ain't had star power, the movie was three minutes too short. They gave me a lot of bullshit reasons why. Is there a list of, of uh, things that you have to have to get on that? Yeah, but I I didn't um, pursue it no more, so that was maybe like when I did it. See, the movie that I just came out right now, that is four or five years old. Mm -hmm. So I ain't keep none of that information on what they told me I needed to do. Right. They can be different right now because everything changes, especially how the life is now, technology and stuff like that. Yeah. I just I just feel like some people try to keep you out. Tubi, Tubi is letting niggas in. Find yourself. Yeah. Period. Yeah. Some motherfuckers, you know, it's just like um they do, they do they do everything to keep us out. Once they see you trying to do something, they 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 well my mama was a police officer. She ain't had nothing but a high school diploma. As soon as niggas start being police, then they, they move to the finish line. Or right, now you need a college degree. Now you need an associate degree. Now you need a bachelor's degree. Right. Same thing with um, what do you call that when you uh when you um appraisers. You didn't even need a you didn't even need nothing but an eighth grade diploma for that shit. Now you can't do appraisers without having a college. You know, they just move to as soon as niggas get in it, they move they move the goal line. That's how you always you make it hard for the niggas. The whole time I look at that in more than one way. Uh, they wouldn't keep trying to move the goal line if they knew we wanted some cold motherfuckers. Like we make something out of nothing. Right, but I don't even think they think that. They just like I just wanna put my I wanna keep my foot on your neck. Right. It, to me it's the same thing because like, okay, I so if you bump into a white woman, you have a baby by the rest of her lineage is no longer white. Right. That's the good reason to keep your ass outside. Right. Now, but now you it's no longer. It's no more us now. Right, but here's the thing. When did you need money to fuck a white bitch? <laughs> that part. <laughs> I mean, not trying to be funny, you know. Like, keep it real though. That was. I got family that's white. I got friends that I love that's white, but I'm just right. being. Just, All the way, yes, sir. Right. When did you need money? I, I, but I know what you, I know what you, I know which way you thinking. Yes, sir. But most of the niggas that got, like, except these NFL stars with no game, just want they dick wet, these mm -hmm. boobies. Most of these women, I'm gonna tell you though, I ain't gonna even blame it on that now. Cause I, cause when they come down to black women, I feel like they don't intend to do it, but that gives you the hardest, that gives you a hard time, just in general. As a whole, some people get through, dogs gonna rub off every, in every lane, right? But, they give a nigga a hard time. Then they go over here and get somebody to roll over and play dead. Then he like, shit. <laughs> what shit? You know, Chris, do you, do you think it's justified to give niggas a hard time? Uh, I don't think most of them don't have a reason to. I, I ain't mad at being confident, but I mean, some of them just being stupid, though. That part. I, I'll, I'll, I'm going to say most, because most that I bump into most people, it ain't just a, a gender specific thing. Most people are going to be really doing dumb shit. It ain't really adding up to nothing really good in their future. It may feel good right now. Like you'll win the argument or I look shiny right now, but mm -hmm. 
Five, ten years from now, you kind of fucked up. But here, another thing is, I ass an ass job ain't gonna get you a husband. <laughs> that part is gonna get you a Friday night. <laughs> Probably a weekend. I ain't, I ain't mad at the people that do it, but for the most part, I feel like a lot of them people want attention now. But some of them deserve to be wiped up, right? They just need one of some... Need some guy. Some self-confidence or some Definitely. shit, whatever they... But niggas do it too, though. It ain't just one. And that's why I say it ain't a gender-specific thing. Niggas out here bang... Stomach and shit. No, I ain't even talking about that, but niggas is going over crazy with that shit. I'm talking about niggas bang 28 years rent. That's just an extension of it. It's all... Exterior shit to add value to what I am the whole time. I'm solid anyway. Right, but who, but, uh, so most men ain't digging to be like, I gotta find my wife. Right. A lot of women is like, I wanna be, you know. Oh, you wife, yeah, that's so. Yeah, so I can get this. Well, see, 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 men get it for the most part for exactly what we're talking about. For some, for some new experiences. If I could, then we can word it like that. You know what I'm saying? That part, yeah, it's not. And women want somebody, you know, uh, man. If I could, sometimes women do it for the right reasons a little bit. If I could reel a person in with my looks, they gonna see that I'm a keeper, right? But some of them just did it because little Janine and them did that shit. Yeah, follow the leader that shit. Mm -hmm. The whole time, and to me that's why I go back to not gender specific things, because there's a lot of people moving like that. Because they saying buddy move like this, nah, okay, I should. It ain't no real self-confidence, it's dude getting there look fun to him. But you you might like to go fishing, this nigga might like to go shoot guns. You ain't even trying your own route, you just trying what you see this nigga do. Mm -hmm. That's true. I don't like no, I don't like, I don't like a woman that anything I say, Oh, I like that too. Oh, that's good. No, get your mind on your own. I ain't never been attracted to nobody to just lay down when I say lay down, man. No, that's definitely the more though, because if you moving like that with me, you just rolling over with me. You, you roll over with him too? Anybody. You yeah. outside the streets, anybody pushing you over. I can't give you my fortress and you just gonna be a pushover. Yep, agreed. Where you from, big I ain't even gotta have a fortress, huh? I said, where you from, big dog? As far as what, city? See, we we met before where it was on a drunk night of a fight and shit like that. We ain't really introduced oh. like each other like that, you know? Yeah, well, who was fighting? Where was uh, it? It was Haney. Haney got his dad's beat, the one I ain't gonna lie. Haney and the, uh, oh, the master nigga. Oh, Lomachenko, Yeah, Lomachenko, it was a white nigga. Yeah, yeah, he was like, <laughs> <laughs> little yeah, he was beating that boy ass. It looked like I thought he won. They gave that nigga the fight, but I got, you know, I don't, I don't really know how to, I don't, man. I don't want to get technical, man. He lost that fight, man. <laughs> Straight up. That's what I'm I about to say, I don't know how to, uh, I don't know how to count a fight. I don't got to count a fight. I know somebody got the ass for it. He got his ass punched up. But yeah, I'm from Chicago. Shit, I'm from, you know, shit, right off 87. That's, uh, no, I, uh, I go around with the camera. Uh, kind of like give people a platform to, to show who they really are. A, a lot of this shit be entertainment and it be the songs and all that. We be kind of pushing certain narratives to the kids. It's a lot of people who follow us, you know? Yeah. They think what we doing is cool. Even if they ain't close, they could be a little nigga in Arkansas. He he got diamonds in this shit because he see Coach Steele with diamonds in his shit, you know? Right. And we powerful in that sense. And it's the same way I say, okay, if you bump a white bitch, before you know it, it ain't, it's there, it's no longer white. Now it's just the nigga family now, you know? 100%. And we so influential in a lot of different ways. And at the point you are at now in life, do you see like how you move? Do you see the positive influence that you did? Do you see there's more negative influence that you did? Um, I mean, I see both. I see results of both. I see niggas coming home grown, you know what I'm saying? And that I might have had a slight influence on, on, you know, when I was younger. And I see people that, shit, I told the truth, that I spoke the truth to. 
And they make good decisions, you know what I'm saying? So, I mean, I don't know, that's a, that's a tough, because what person you know from the inner city that was involved in certain shit don't have two sides to a book? Hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but I, I just had this conversation with somebody the other day. We, we all are more than one thing. We doing what we gotta do. You know, find our way and doing what we want to do at the same time. Yeah. Yeah, you know, we, we like you say, we, I, I look at it similar to what you said. We black, we gonna figure, we gonna figure shit out. But, you know, one thing that I feel like I always, I didn't do, just cause I kinda cut the, cut it off from being a part of a, a certain level of that street shit. I still ain't never turned my back on the people that got in trouble before I got those, before I felt that way. Cause I know that it could have been me too. Yes, sir. You know what I'm saying? So now a lot, a lot of people can come to me and say, Hey, Cole, man, you don't send none of these little new little niggas no money. Well, I don't even know. And, and, and I still, listen, if somebody reach out to me that I ain't super familiar with from the old area, and I'm good, I'm going to shoot them some paper. But I ain't going to make no nigga I don't know make me feel like I'm obligated to... <laughs> Bidding with them when I ain't, you know what I'm saying? Then you gotta remember, man, that whole, that whole way of life, nobody wanted to listen. They was all anti, fuck the OG type shit. You know what I'm saying? And then all of a sudden they, they get that time and then they be like, hey, can I, I ain't mad at them, but, you know. Where does that come from, the fuck the OG life, right? Man, if I tell you my theory on it, you gonna, my theory, man, that shit came from being followers. They follow. That shit came from being like Chief Keith started that shit, bro. <laughs> he said Keith started that. That whole drill era started that fuck the OG movement. It was before that though. No, oh, I didn't uh, see it. I didn't so. see it. No. So so did it just like the whole no limit, like, the no limit, no law. That's going against that, the renegade, the bar none. No, nah, oh, they wasn't saying fuck they OGs though. Yeah, because Slim was still an OG. That's what the rule. We ain't talking about the rules. Yeah, but when you say no limit, no limit is still young herb, young herb, bro. That's not the older guys, G. Look, you're right. He did respect, he throw respect on it for a little. Yeah. So, and you gotta remember, they did go at their big homies. And that's what I'm saying. So, 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 it, that, and that was the drill era. So, so it was a, a little, a little under after. The music part was the drill era, but it was before that. That's why I said the bar none. Bar none. I, I meant the influence. Like you always hear something here and there. You gonna hear something happening here and there. But I'm saying, as a whole, because it did. I know it was. I know it was the musical influence because at first I doubted it, and then it went all around the globe. It was to say it wasn't just, you know. And when you think about who the goat to these kids, it's Keith. It's Keith. Yeah, he he got the crown and all. That's what I, I hear you in that sense. But what I meant was like, all right, it is a situation to where the kids don't listen to nobody. You know, we could have we 40, 50, 60, whatever age that we are, right. and we can get them the game on how it was in the 80s and the 90s, the structure that that formed what it is now. But they don't be willing to listen. And I'm, I, I kind of want to know, was it like that further back, or is that some new no, shit? Because, because what, what, what's, what's the difference between we having some OGs and they having some OGs? The reason why, the reason why I ain't never did drugs is because I listened to the people up top, and that was, and that was voodoo to do, you know, hardcore yeah, drugs. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It was voodoo to eat pork. It was voodoo to that part. Yeah, yes sir, yes sir. I so hear. it's for to come down to this. These niggas right now eat them. They just put anything in their pork body. chop right now. Anything, I mean, no yeah, matter what. And be like, like, and be and say all is well right afterwards. <laughs> so you know, like I ain't gonna solely blame it up, but a lot that 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 genre had a big influence on it mm. because 
If you ever listen to any of them stories where they tried to, the big homies tried to discipline them over in O Block and how they played that game. That shit worked, that, that shit came inside out from O Block out mm -hmm. to Chicago and to the other country. Yeah. 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 Like, you know, you always had a nigga that a banged out with his own people, but it wasn't a thing. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? They yeah, made it yeah, a yeah. thing, shit. So, somebody said, um, we we aiming our goal at the lowest point of the nigga, the slime nigga, the nigga who are snake his friend and all that other shit, who are bang out with his pieces. We not aiming our shit at the honorable nigga who will take the blow and do what he got to do to build his people up. We aiming at the nigga who's going to be that selfish motherfucker. That's why we respecting the nigga who's going to bang out with the old heads instead of respecting the one who's going to listen. We looking for the instant gratification. I don't know what the young niggas think because we don't think alike. But at the end of the day, I can say I can just I can tell you one thing. You just gotta follow the trends, the trends of what they, the announcements that were made in in in, in that genre. G, where did you think the switches come from? The Hellcats, all of, it all came from this this whole, you know this whole little, you know what I'm saying? And I, you know what I used to tell people, not used to. This is what I tell people: the minute. That Keith or Lil Dirk or somebody with that type of influence say, they already say we don't stop for the police. And so now do the we screech out from the police. Who stopped for the police now? <laughs> Nobody. Yeah, it's over with. When they when they when they open their mouth and they say, the ones made it to where the police don't even chase you no more. When they when they open their mouth and they say <laughs> they even chase us. That's definitely influence. Like what with that yeah, and I get back to what we're talking about, that influence. Hey, the minute they say we gonna kill the cops, whoop the whoop, man, I feel sorry for police all over the country because they already got better weapons than the police officers. Hell yeah, no switches, a motherfucker. Ain't no getting away from a switch, and that best ain't gonna help you. And it, it, to me, it's just too. And we give a lot of respect. I be watching, in my mind, I be like, we. I watch a lot of black kids. Unarmed black kids get killed by cops, and the cops get to say, you know, uh, stop moving, freeze, or, or uh, stop resisting. They can say all this shit, and then it'd be like, it brings some type of justification to the courtroom, right? But in my mind, I feel like, uh, as a people, we'll do each other so dirty. We'll kill our mama, we'll kill your mama, kill your cousin. Yeah, that's his grandma. We can't catch him. They do shit like that, mm -hmm. and then a po and then a then a white cop will pull up and they say they they kill a nigga dead right here. The white cop will pull up and they say freeze, and you'll drop the gun and and sit and and cross your fucking legs. <laughs> you finna get a hundred years? What you sport? What? Why? Right. But you will go out and do this. You'll do you'll do me dirty though. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I it's the um I've been on the fence. You just made me think about something. I've been on the fence about interviewing. Uh, quote unquote snitch as they say uh, Cause it's the same thing like You call yourself bucking against the system But then here it comes You join the system Yeah the system's right here in your face and you bowing down That's similar to okay you will shoot Shoot up this crib, shoot up this block But then when a police come who's really oppressing you Your arms is in the air mm -hmm. And then you get killed Either way Either way, you still... Or you do the 100 years. Or you do the 100 years. So you coming and going either way, make a stand for something. So so my thing would be this. I'm not going to sit there and tell nobody to be the vigilante. What I'm going to say is, at the end of the day, my thoughts on... And this is what... This is bringing me to my thoughts on police brutality. It ain't no one... It ain't no way... The way we've been trying to get it to stop, it ain't going to stop that way. <laughs> if they don't, if the cops don't, if the cops that actually do the crime that never get convicted don't feel the same shit that we feel, then they ain't gonna never have no mercy for that shit. It's always gonna be uh, they're gonna they're gonna wait till they get around each other, uh, each other, uh, all the white cops, and go get a badge of honor. Mm -hmm. But that, that's hard to do because when you say cops, that's a system. You can't make a robot feel. You feel me? So it ain't, 
It ain't no never. It ain't no way that they gonna feel the oppression that we feel as a people. No, I ain't saying like. I'm saying like if you a cop. Yes, sir. And you kill an unarmed man. The individual cop, yeah. And somebody Google your fucking mama's address or do some do the same shit they do to to do your daddy dirty if you black, yeah. right? Then what would the cops do? What would the, how would the cops? You know, and then you don't you don't let them think it's some random mystery shit. I'm saying, man, I just be having dreams of how we can stop racism. And I, I ain't never had a positive way. Like you know, like the, the you know, what I'm saying I ain't never. It's not well, gonna be positive. It, it ain't gonna be positive. I hate to say it because it wasn't created positively. Neither. To keep it fucking, to me, to solve the problem would be to extinguish all this shit because we it's a lot of us perpetuating the bullshit. If we want a peaceful journey and all that other shit. We got to knock all this bullshit out, but we ain't gonna get to where we want to be. I think, at least, in a peaceful way. So, yeah. so, so, when you say we, what you mean? If we want to get the kids out, this okay? I gotta be 15 years old and I gotta kill you. I gotta run around with the switch. Fuck school. I wanna get high. I wanna pop his in and all that. We gotta reset this shit because it's still gonna be thoughts of that shit in the air. It's still gonna be songs and niggas singing about fuck my cousin, fuck the ops. If somebody makes you upset. Do this to them instead of calming your motherfucking self down and thinking as a man would, building the future instead of holding your life to that one instant moment. But I just, I feel like we just were speaking on something completely different, though, second. And when I, when, so now that I think that way, what I'm saying is, I'm still talking about when an unarmed black kid that wasn't involved in nothing gets killed by a police officer, how do we fix that? We, in a way, talking about the same shit. It's just, I guess, one of us is going a long route than the other. So, the reason why a cop is killing a kid because he's scared of him, to keep it all the way funky. You you ain't really raised in this kind of lifestyle. You look at a black kid as, he from the hood, he from the street, he may got a switch on him. For real, you scared in real life. You are not willing to approach this man in a calm manner because you scared he gonna do something to you. If we remove the fear of that, Ain't nobody gotta live like that. If this. you remove the fear of that, you still had the cops that just want to kill a nigga. That's true. That's true. You know. That's true. You can you can you can shrink some of this shit with this by making somebody feel better about. But how can you stop them from being spooked? Well, they, 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 they never trying to live around. Well, how can you stop them from being racist? Yeah. Or just want to get niggas out the way. I hear you. But it, it, it go back to what what we were saying earlier as far as the love making there and fear. At least that's my perspective. I don't know all. It this. could be, but I don't know how you can fix that because I don't know what started that. Or, or maybe not fix that. Then how can we get into a position to where we're protecting ourselves from that? I just told you how we can protect ourselves from it. Not, I mean, like, what what can you protect yourself from if you got if he got a gun and I don't? I mean, changing the system and the way we're raising the kids to. Not want to pick up the switch to understand that I that ain't the kid. Dentist. Sir, it's not the kid with the switch that's getting killed by the police. That part. Not, I'm, I'm not, and, and the one they are, but I ain't speaking on them because I understand. Because yeah. I understand when a police is scared of a nigga with a switch and he kills him. It's been plenty of times I look on TV and I'd be like, you know, and I'd be one, I'd be wanting to look at it and say, this racist son of a bitch. And then I say. Fuck, man, he had every right to kill him. Tamir Rice, you remember that? Bullshit. On what part? I was a baby. Uh -huh. And you ain't give him a chance to put the shit, you just, you came up, you rolled up Papa. I, I'm with that too, though, because I didn't like that part. I just didn't like the fact that, all right, you got parents, you ain't just pop up on the earth from nowhere. Who was giving you the idea that this is cool? Because I seen the video to where he walking up on motherfuckers acting like he robbed him. How are you growing up in an environment to where you think that's a game to play like that? Well, see, I ain't see that. So, you know, if, if, if I, I could change my perspective. All I, I saw that short, they pulled up and they got and, busy. Yeah, they definitely was both. He was a that. baby. They definitely was both. But the, the narrative is what's crazy. And I seen them wrestle guns away from white folks, wrestle knives away. The opportunities that they take to kill us, put it on another level, man. Another thing is, it's not, it ain't nothing you can really do. Like, I know you, you are, you, um, what do you, I would consider you like hopeful because. Yeah, real shit though. You know, I would consider you hopeful because it's like, this shit has been going on for a hundred years. They've been trying to change the system peacefully. 
ain't work yet. The, the only the, listen, the girl, the woman cop who killed the boy, Taser, Taser, in Minnesota. Remember the little black kid that got yeah. killed in Minnesota? She was acting like it was a Taser. 16, yeah. 16 years they gave her, right? Okay, how'd she get out in 16 months? Damn. I mean, that's the thing, man. They just put the Band-Aid. It's still, this shit's still systematic. But So that, that kind of go with the vibe that I'm thinking in the long run. It's the system working against us, but we still working with the system. Huh? We still, so, all right, we got laws set up to where if you catch a felony, you can't have a gun, you can't have this license. Instead of training our kids to grow up to be this age, to get your proper gun license, we teaching them to gang, gang, bang, bang. So I do hear what you saying with that check, shit. Check this out. I was in the gang, right? Yes, sir. All right. My mama was a cop. All right. I had good upbringing in it. My mama ain't teach me that shit, bro. My mama tried to teach me what you saying. It ain't that easy, bro. I try to teach my kids certain shit. Sometimes they just don't listen. From the you said okay, you recognize something to me, and I'm a hopeful. With that perspective. In life, I view it as optimism. Do you see that that being a good perspective in life? Would you want your kids to have a hopeful, hopeful, optimistic perspective in life? Yeah, but I still want them to be mindful that that shit is just a dream. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, no question. You know what I'm saying? My son get the drift. My son understand. Mm -hmm. See, it's a certain thing. My son understand that if you don't want no smoke, don't light a fire. Think, think quick, right? My son ain't gonna be around. My daughter, on the other hand, I feel like they're another generation, which, which to me, that generation is a generation that those are the ones that's gonna be more stronger to stop racism. Why? Because they don't see color. Because mm -hmm. it takes so much to teach the racism. They don't see color though. Yeah, real shit though. When real I go to my daughter's bad. prom, she the only black person, if not other one other person. She got Spanish, she got Chinese, she got, you know, or Oriental, I don't know if it's Chinese, I don't know why I ain't trying to say nothing disrespectful. I'm just saying at the end of the day, my, my thing is, the way that we gonna fix racism, and that, like, I just, I'm saying this, in the, in, the, in the moment we in right now, it's a couple things just that you, how you can make things, and this is what I'm doing my next movie on too, my next series movie. Police brutality. I mean, uh, uh, trying to get police to, the, the un, you know, like stop the uh, unarmed killings. But in order for them to, I want you to say that. You go, that's kind of really promoting your movie. But I want you to say it more natural. I'm gonna do it for you. Okay. Introduce yourself to the people, God. Man, Cole Steele. Where you from, big dog? Man, Chicago. You know, from right off 87th. I hear um, you used to wrestle and shit. Not too many niggas from Chicago was wrestlers in school and shit. Yeah, and man. That's I, true? Yeah, yeah, I used to I used to wrestle, wrestle, you know, through high school. I was supposed to do it for college, but I, I, I coach wrestling right now. Did you have, a, uh, like, scholarships and all that? No, it, it mostly because of my grades, though. Like, when I, when I was, I was able to beat the starting, uh, Starting a uh, one forty nine pound at the university. I was uh, I went to a junior college right next to the university. I used to be able to beat them, but I I ain't never get my grades up. It, I could have easily went to school for no money for it though. Do you ever regret that? Man, sometimes I used to think about what it could have been, but then I started thinking about my children and shit like that. Man, I'd be like, I you know. I'll, let's leave it the way it is. And and another thing is, you know, now I feel like that. Uh, I used to feel more about man. I wanted to be able the right way. I went because I just wasn't financially, you know, didn't figure it out. But now I feel like that. Uh, I've been put in my right space, man. Okay. And, and you say you had to have things worked out with the music and all that. I don't say that because I mean, <laughs> yes, sir. You know. I, I like to win, you know what I'm saying? You don't feel I, like you won? I feel like I won to a degree, but it's levels to winning. I wanted to win for all of Jay-Z win. I won, that's kind of, you know what I'm saying? Like I might, I, and you know, a lot of people acknowledge that I won big to a person from the city. 
you know, because it's like, you know, people don't get paid for music. I got paid for, I got paid for years for knowing what I do, you know what I'm saying? So, uh, you know, we, we almost, you know, we was almost signed to some degree, but the Chicago, Chicago politics, you know, some weird Chicago politics that kind of transpired with, which held us back. But, uh, no, I mean, you know what I'm saying? I, I'm not, I'm not, uh, interested in being in the front of the, the camera no more on that level, but, uh, we definitely, I definitely, I, I didn't win the way I wanted to win, but, but I, I, I if I was to be realistic, I did win to a certain level, you know what I'm saying? I consider your time as far as uh, in Chicago, or at least the, the quote unquote peak from the way I see things, but like the glue that kept Chicago together in a sense, because Twister was on like a, a downward spiral, Bump had I think went to jail or yeah. wasn't really doing as much as he was before. Yeah. And then now here comes somebody who keeping it bubbling. You know what I mean? Yeah, I do I do feel that. I feel like that uh I don't feel like I get a whole lot of credit for it, but I feel like that and when I say I ninety percent of the time I'm speaking eight nine music, right? The group that I have, but mm -hmm. I feel like that uh I we feel that void. We feel the a, a huge void because we came in and people really wasn't fucking with us. I had the mindset to we not we we gonna do it ourselves, you know. When it came to shows, when it came to doing a whole lot of shit, I I didn't, I didn't chase nobody. We always we decided we was gonna do our own thing, and, and um, we started to be more of a staple that people, you know, saying for people and a platform for people to come display their talent wherever we open the doors at, it, et cetera, et cetera. So yeah, I definitely feel the same way that you just explained. I felt like we, I, it was a void. You know, this one's on a high, this one's on a low, this one was locked up, this one was, you know, you know had a space for it. What's something that you feel like that you could have done better than you did before, as far as the music career? Um, man, when you say that, it's a lot of, like, to me, man, I tried to be, as honorable as possible with music, you know what I'm saying, or whatever have you. I don't believe that my mishaps came from what I didn't do with music. I believe that, um, I don't believe that God let you get away with nothing. And I feel like the stuff that happened when we was in the street was more so uh, what I, was, was my reason for being held back. Like, I feel like that it was situations where we could have been, you know, very wealthy and, and uh, using music, but every time something didn't go the right way, I always said, you know, I, you know, God couldn't let me get wealthy uh, because I had so many people around me, man, that, you know, that was in jail or got killed for some, you know, like, you know, like I said, karma come different, man, you know what I'm saying? And then here I am, people just thinking I'm sliding through life. Uh, but, you know, because I didn't get shot or I didn't get killed or I didn't go to the penitentiary, or, you know what I'm saying? And um, they thought I, they, 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 you know, they felt like I was good with women and, you know, always had good luck and was, you know what I'm saying? Like, it was just all. But um, a lot of people didn't understand, man. Um, I looked at things differently. When things didn't go right, I kind of knew what that was about. You know, I knew karma didn't skip me. I I, I wasn't the one. I wasn't the one saying, "Why me? I don't know why this happened to me." I was like, "Damn, man!" Like, man, you know, because it was it was points where I had thought I changed, and then it was points where I'm like, "Man, I changed. Why is this happening?" And then it'd get to a, another segment of my life where something else would happen, and I'd be like, "Damn, if I was wealthy in this moment, I would have probably spent some money getting revenge." You know what I'm saying? Like on some real shit. So. I kind of understood the play on that, so I ain't complain much. You know, it do, you, hurt. do you still find yourself in that kind of pocket to where if you had a, a quote unquote bag where you were finding yourself? No, but by that time, by the time I cleared that process, I felt like that um, my position had changed. You know what I'm saying? In, in hip hop, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, you know, I just looked at it differently. Like, you know, I definitely felt like I had changed, and then 
um, when another situation jumped up, I was just like, I was kind of ready to go again, right? And even if I wasn't going to go again, I was ready to be like, you know, I'm paying this. If I, I would have had that money, I definitely would have did something silly, put it like that. Well, I'm glad you didn't do nothing silly in For that sure. sense or whatever, you know. For sure. We, we ain't to push things towards the positive thing. I see the music business is something Chicago can use in a positive way. They giving out $30 million, you know. You know what that could do for a community like ours? I don't know what it could do. Exactly. So it's like the people with that kind of money in the right hand, I just want to aim the kids the right way to milk this music. They want to give out $30 million. Let's put it in the right hands and do it the right way. Has it, have you, do you feel like they ever been in the right hands? I, I don't know. I can't say what somebody's doing with their money. Um, He's about 50 years old, right? I don't think that we've done right. No, I don't think we've done the right thing. Right. That's uh, a good answer. That's an answer that without trying to say the same thing with the NBA. Same thing with the NFL. I don't think no. It, I don't think it takes fifty. I don't think it takes two years to change the lives of the people. I see more greed take over than anything. Yeah, because sometimes, man, we be in competition with each other, man. And if you get the Bentley, I gotta go get the Bentley too. Right. That's why so many people that I mean, there's a couple people in the industry and in football. What's that running back from Seattle? Uh, is he talking about Lynch? Yeah. Uh, the one who uh, they ain't get a ball suit when they yeah, Lynch that's him. Yeah. He always giving back. Yeah. He and always he, giving back. He and and that's what I mean. The right kind of people. Like Shorty did it the right way. He ain't spend no rap check and I'm not a rap check. No football check and all that. He just stacked his bread. I think he stayed true to his people he came up with. And I really don't see that that much. Do you feel like you, in that situation, do you, do you feel like you stayed true to your people you came up with? So, when it come down to it, man, you know, I ain't really have no opportunity to give no help the way they did. That part. You know what I'm saying? But, Not millions, yeah. Right? Yeah, but, but I felt like I was loyal to my people. I don't always feel like I got it back in return. Do you feel like it's, it's way more you being the loyal one? Or maybe not the, I ain't trying to say it in like a bad connotation. Meaning you being the one who supported your people more than they supported you. Well, when we speak on it, I should be speaking in past tense. Yes, sir. You know, I don't feel like I owe nobody now. And I don't feel like nobody owe me. That part. You know, I'm speaking on past tense. You know, I'm speaking on me attempting to be a certain type of way to my immediate people and, and I don't feel like I don't feel like everybody was uh, appreciative of the efforts that I put out you know so to me sometimes that come with the leadership you know heavy is the head of the crown you know what that's cool and and you know my thing is to get out the way sometimes and say hey if you feel like you're good at if you feel like you can do better let me support you and show you. Let me give you the rock. And let's see, let's see how far you take it up the court. Yes, sir. I hear you're a big Bud Crawford fan. Yeah, yeah, no, uh, Bud is my favorite fighter. I was introduced to him by my my family in Omaha. You know what I'm saying? And um, I was introduced, and I've been following him ever since, man. You know what I'm saying? Now you know I ain't, I ain't no I ain't one of them niggas that just jump on the bandwagon. I he called. You know, he cold and, um, you know. I, I saw uh, your shirt, but I ain't never heard about it. Maybe you want to check him out. I'm definitely going to check him yeah, out. Yeah, man. I got, got, my, got my Crawford shirt on right now. I support him. That's I part. support him. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to check him out, bro. I'm going to check him out. Nah, uh, man. You ain't seen him, man. He, he finna had the biggest fight that you can imagine with uh with um, Earl Spence, man. This is the biggest fight of the decade. Oh, this fight is Earl Spence? Fighting Earl Spence. Oh, so he on something for real then. He gonna whoop his ass too. <laughs> that part. Yeah. Fuck his shit. For That's real. And I'm putting I'm putting my money where my mouth is. Yeah, how much you talking about? Uh depends on how when I get when it get closer to the date. I don't know, depending on how much I got saved up. Shit. That part. <laughs> might make something interesting or something. So I like a little wage in hand and you know. I'm gonna go I'm gonna try to gamble like with the uh down there in Vegas. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna try to say, you know, five thousand on the knockout, and just, and I know that's gonna get some good odds. Five thousand on the knockout. Yeah. You put him down. 
I don't think he's putting him down, but I think he can. And I think that if I do pull that off, that five probably gonna give me like 25. Who real quick, put his ass down one time. <laughs> I know one thing, if you get him hurt, he gonna cook him for yeah. sure. So look, I'm gonna hope and pray on you getting that, taking that five, turning into 60. Come on, let's do it. Go crazy. <laughs> All I say is take a shot with me. I'll battle ball. Just take a shot with me. Man, it, it's gonna be a lot of shots, ball I win that shit. <laughs> that part. All right, on that note, good luck with the fight, big dog. We appreciate you from Chicago, not just me with this interview. We appreciate what you've done for our city. For sure. Yes, sir. Uh, peace and love. Love.